Welcome back to What RT Nibs with General Disturbance. We've got a game, or a couple of games, with the M44 now, the Tier 6 American SPG, and starting us off is Squirrelly Nuts, and he's on the south spawn of Himmelsdorf. Well, this is not a very RT friendly map, it's quite small, and there are relatively few places that RT can go and be safe. Oh, in this map, in this game, there's three RT on each side, and it's a Tier 6 game with Tier 5 Arty on it. Okay, the enemy team has got an M44, a Gorilla and a Fifi, and our team has got an M44 and two Fifis. I think a lot of you would probably know the Fifi as the Lethe. Uh, the reason for that obviously is uh, that's the name that most people call it, but in actual truth the uh, the Lethe, Leaf Blower, Lethe, or whatever you want to call it, uh, it's still quite um, an OP premium arty. I'm wondering why Squirrelly Nuts is uh, doing what he's doing at the moment. I think he hasn't made up his mind where he wants to shoot from. But you can see the Fifi is actually getting good shots on the enemy at the moment. And Squirrelly Nuts is trying to work out where he's going to go. I think he's trying to set up directly behind the VP, but oh now this is interesting. An AMX ELC has come south and he's now right next door to the VP and he sent him a light and he's died. And so is the LC. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of a mistake. You don't go directly in front of an M44's 155mm howitzer because it's capable of 550 alpha. And if it does penetrate you, as it, well, the ELC does have very thin armour, then you are going to die very promptly. Okay, well, we've got a couple of tanks on that corner. T-67 and a Nazor rounds out. And that splashed both of them. In fact, he not only got some damage, he also got stun assist. Now, a fairly okay position here, because you've got the railway wagons in front of you, which protect you from the enemy. The enemy's just too far away to see you at the moment. Now, he's finally speculative into that corner. Oh, and he just killed the T-67. So he's got his first kill. He's now relocating to this position. I think he might be able to drop around directly through the window at the far end here. He's trying to get a solution. You can possibly do it. In fact, he's decided to hit the T-67. He sees the Nashorn running away, fires around at him, and just gets some stun. Okay, the enemy gorilla has been spotted. He's gone to a fairly obvious position, but he got spotted by our ELC, who's coming up at him, turns out. And he's damaged, badly damaged the gorilla. And the gorilla then got killed by the Striv M42. Okay, still looking for more targets. We found the enemy M44 who just shotgunned our T67. Yeah, he made exactly the same mistake that the ELC did and got himself killed. Squirrelly can't fire between those two buildings. He did have a solution on the M44, but he's lost sight of him now, so things are... Well, we're still in the lead, but only just. Oh, two tank lead now. Yes, yeah, so this is looking a lot better. And he's got a solution on the Nashorn. Just dialing in, almost ready to go. Just adjusting to the left side bit. And that's a kill shot. So three kills now for Squirrelly Nuts. In fact, we can see the T-67, but he's not far enough away to actually be able to loop a shell into that corner. And the enemy M44 has come in this direction. And I think he knows that Squirrelly Nuts is here. Hello, locked on, and thank you. Oh, and he set light to him. The other M44 fluffed his shotgun. And that's four kills now for Squ Squirrelly Nuts. There's only three enemy tanks left, and they're all up the other end of the map. So I think he can actually just drive straight up there and start shotgunning a few more. So that's two tanks he's killed by shotgun. He's actually lining up on that corner because he's going to try and lob a shell into the enemy carrier, and I don't think he can at the moment. 
No, there goes the M6. Uh, can't get a solution on the T67. There's an enemy KV-1S somewhere around. Yes, it still hasn't located him. Oh, there he is. He's actually come up behind our two guys. And uh, now it's just one enemy left. He's trying to get a solution. So no, can't get a position there. He's backing up to see if he can shoot over the buildings. No, the buildings just get in the way. The best thing to do is just drive up behind the enemy. And there's the last death. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was one of ours. Sorry. We just lost our KB-1S. And the enemy now... Well, it's one versus three. Our thief is sitting in the corner. And I don't think he's got shots on that KB-1S either. But the best way to get at him would be to just literally drive up behind him and shoot him in the rear. Oh, not sure that Squirrely Nuts is working out how he's driving yet. Um, and, oh dear, we just lost our Panzer Pia Arsenal H. So, the best way to deal with him now is to ambush that KV-1S. Because he thinks he's got the game. He's up against two RT. But, of course, he's up against two RT, one of which is actually a what RT Noobs member. So he does know how to play this tank and get good shotguns on the enemy if he needs to. I think he's going to try and set up an ambush. The enemy, uh, our enemy Phoebe, uh, our Phoebe, is actually moving north along the railway lines. And I'm a bit curious as to why Screwly Nuts is going up the hill. Yeah, I was just thinking a couple of people are, are uh, confused as well. Now, I think he's taking this position so he can get a uh, decent shot on the enemy once he's spotted. But I have the feeling the enemy tank is just going to go to the cap circle and start capping. Yeah. Cromwell B is saying um, he's a noob. Well, yes, he's a what art he noob. So he's actually a, quite a bit better than most other players. There's a logic to what Squirrelly Nuts is doing. He's done far better. Oh, he's found the enemy KV-1S. And the KV-1S flaps his first shot. And Squirrelly Nuts is trying to keep below the gun, the ground depression to get around without being shot. Now, I reckon the KV-1S will turn around and try and double back. Yeah, it looks like he did. If he tries to come around this corner, the problem is that the ground depression actually does make it fairly difficult to get the gun to lay on the target. Yes, he has doubled back, which means he's gonna be coming around this side. Now, shooting in this direction is gonna be a lot easier. KV-1S is going to be a little confused as to why the M44 hasn't appeared. Now we can see him. Here we go. Now he does know where Screwly Nuts is located now. And in fact, actually, the Fifi has got a perfect shot on that KV-1S. He should be able to shoot at him, but he's not bothering. He's actually going to the cap, which is rather silly. But you see Screwly Nuts is um, facing off against this KV-1S, who's trying to get a creep around the corner and just get a corner of Scribbly Nuts and he might just do it. And Scribbly Nuts is backing away to get his gun on to lay on the target. He's now going to RT aim to see if he can do it that way. The KV-1S knows what happens when you get shotgunned by an RT though. That's the problem for him. And also the worry for him is that even if Scribbly Nuts just fires into the ground next to him, he will die. So he knows he can't really come around the corner. And now the Fifi is starting to fire at him from the cap skirkle. Whilst he's capping. Yes, he's now starting to get hit. And there you go. <laughs> yeah, don't come around a corner where there's an M44 aimed at you. <laughs> oh dear, the ELC learnt that lesson. It's a pity this KB1S driver didn't do as well. Let's have a look at the second battle. 
In the second battle, we've got Fluffy Little Kitten, and he's on the north spawn of Mountain Pass. Game started. Okay, well this is a fairly unconventional position for firing from, which means he's less likely to get counter battery but it does restrict your fields of fire because basically you can only fire directly to the south okay, his first target AMD 178B and out close and he's got some stun off that one and he's picked up some stun assist okay there are some enemy tanks in the south there's an SP1C out. Long flight time. Oh, direct hit right on his front. He didn't like that one and he's pulled back into cover. Okay, there is a T20. Oh, and a Striv as well. This is a good target. He can really do some serious damage to this guy. And the first shell actually goes to the left and behind him. So unfortunately he's in siege mode so he's very accurate and he's just killed our AMD 178B and now he's out of siege mode and running so he's lining up a shot in fact he's decided to go for the Hellcat instead they can just about get a shot on this guy but unfortunately we've lost sight of him temporarily so we're firing into that corner and he got a direct hit so obviously he correctly worked out where the Hellcat had moved to and you can see the Striv is now on that corner as well oh now he did get counter battery, the enemy GW Panther worked out where he was. He's gonna fire around in there. Rounds out. Oh! Yep, he killed the Striv and damaged the T20, but he has to move from this position because the enemy managed to work out exactly where he was. So he's gone back, aiming the same spot again, trying to get that Hellcat. He's now sitting in that area and oh no missed that t20 the shell happened to uh, hit the rock face instead and there's an enemy tiger 2 coming up the ice road and this is kind of awkward because now if he drives out from where he is that tiger 2 might well i don't think you'll see him at the moment but he might see him in a short while if he doesn't move okay we've got an is hiding behind the rock face Lining up the shots, rounds out. Oh, this could be a kit. Lands right next door to him, only stuns him though. I think it did land some distance away, it just shot over the top of his turret. He's gonna have difficulty hitting that IS though, because the rock he's next to is in the way. We might go back to where the other IS is and fire a blind shot in. And he did get a hit. The guy was obviously hiding behind the rock and he just took the full shell. Always worth doing that as well. Even if you lose sight of the enemy, there's a good chance they might still be in the vicinity and just tactically work out what they will be doing next. So we shoot the round in. That landed right next door to where the uh, the Skoda was hiding. He's, oh, there's the IS that he hit earlier. He's down to half his hit points. Now, can he put another round into that guy? He's obviously p pulling back out to shoot. Rounds out. Here we go. Direct hit! 246 on the turret as well. That's more than likely killed his loader because it's on the loader's side. I wouldn't be surprised if his loader's gone. That'll slow his fire rate down as well. Rounds out again. And another direct hit! That IS must be down to his last few hit points. Now, something you may not have noticed, but the Tiger 2 killed the last remaining enemy and was holding him back on the ice road, in fact, well did he kill him actually, I think it, was, it may have been the Wizzy 120, he just bounced around off the uh, the wreck and the enemy T20 just got killed, he picked up stun assist because he stunned that T20, I think that Tiger 2 has actually pulled away, he's retreated, no he hasn't, he's still there and he just killed the Wizzy, but there's the IS, rounds out, this might land behind him, it did but he's gone, and that's more stun assist as well as damage. 
Okay, a couple of the enemy tanks are trying to stop our steel weapon train coming round the ice, uh, not the ice road, the bridge road. We're now trying to get a splash kill on the IS. Rounds out. Too far now. We've got some stun, but that's about it. But he's going to be loaded. Oh, doesn't need it because the kill's there. The enemy's now falling apart. They've still got six out there, though. Three RT. I'm surprised the enemy GW Panther didn't try to counter him again. Because he wasn't that far from where he was last hit. And remember that Tiger 2 might be coming up the ice road. Dickamax is moving into a position to defend against him. Oh, Tiger 2 in sight. Locks on. Gets a hit. Needs to get behind cover quick. The Dickamax gets a hit as well, but the trouble is that Flappy Little Kitten was seen by the enemy RT, so therefore they know where he is and they might be trying to hit him now. It's possible that an enemy shell might be inbound. He's loaded. He's getting ready to shotgun this guy. Locks on. Let it dial in. Now you can go. Yep, 45 hit points. Didn't get the kill, but stunned the guy enough. And there he goes. Kill shot went to the Dickamax. Okay, now he's looking for the enemy RT. Oh, now we've got Skoda T25. He's dialing in. Two enemy RT left. He's anticipating there in this area. There's one of them. The M44. Dialing in. Round cell. Fires before he was fully dialed in, but... Oh, kill shot right on the money. The dollars per minute algorithm must have kicked in, and the enemy said, okay, well, we'll let them have these ones because they're almost dead. And there's one left. And he's upside on the cliff, going down to try and do a shotgun, and survives the fall, but badly wounded, and a last shot goes in. And it would have killed him with Splash, but he was already dead because the T-44 got there before him. So an excellent game there from Fluffy. Two kills and a nice bit of damage. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats for both games. Here's the end of battle results. And it was a second class tanker for Squirrelly Nuts in the M44 on Himmelsdorf. He managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills, including two shotguns. Uh, well, three shotguns, actually, because he shotgunned the AMX CLC. Then he had an M44. And then finally, the KV-1S to win the game, as well as an arsonist, because he set light to one of the enemy and watched them burn up. That was the ELC, I think, if, if I remember correctly. And also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in the game. He managed to get 12. His win eight in that battle was 3,047. Let's have a look at the uh, scores. Well, didn't get the highest damage in the game. The Cromwell B got 1,717 hit points of damage. The next high scorer being the KV-1S that he shotgunned at the end. He got 1,631. And then we've got Squirrelly Nuts himself with 1,431. When it came to kills, though, he had the highest number with five alongside the KV-1S, who also had five. And then three kills went to the Cromwell B and the M6 on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, it was the Cromwell B who did the best with 961. Then we got Squirrelly Nuts with 869. And the third highest was the Type T-34 with 603 base XP. The Strip M42 managed to get a Pascucci's medal, so he must have killed two of the enemy RT in that game. There was three of them. Squirrelly Nuts fired only eight rounds in that entire game. That was quite a long game, but he only got eight shots. Five of them were direct hits, and three of them were penetrations on the enemy as well. Six splash damage of 1,431 hit points, of which 778 were up more than 300 meters. Now I'm rather fascinated to find out which ones did he actually pen. And uh, it wasn't that one. No. No. So it's the ELC he penned, the Nashorn he penned, and the T-67. Now, he took out the Nazon T-67 at fairly long range. And, of course, the ELC shot at short range to get the pen on him. Let's have a look at the rest of the de details. Six enemy vehicles were damaged. Five were killed. 95 hit points of damage assistance. And 84 hit points of stun assist of five stuns. On a free to player account, he earned 21,080 credits, got 10,540 from personal reserves, a total of 31,620. And after resupply of ammunition, he took away 27,580 credits profit. 
he got 869 base XP, same again for completing a mission, and took home 1,738 experience points altogether. So, quite an interesting game. RT won it in the end. The KV1S thought, oh, well, I'm only up against two RT. Yeah, two RT who can take you out. That's the problem, you see, because the uh, Fifi was firing at him from the cap area, and then Squirrely Nuts blew him away with a nice little shotgun. So that was the end of the first battle. Let's have a look at the second one. And Fluffy Little Kitten was on the mountain pass in the M44 on this one. He managed to be a first class tanker for uh, the game. He also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 13. And he also got a confederate because he hit more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. At least six tanks taken out by other teammates. His winning in that game was 4,106, which is quite a decent score. If we look at the team scores, we can see that he didn't get the highest damage in the game. In fact, quite way down on it, because the IS-2 shielded managed 2,521. Then the SP-1C that he hit managed to get 2,391, so he must have been a fairly good player. And then after that, it was the Wizzy 1201 GFT who got 2,222. Fluffy got 1,917. There's one player on the enemy team who's above him and three on his own, so that puts him in fifth place. When it came to kills, the top scorer was the T-44 with four kills, three kills to the IS-2 shielded on his own team and the SP-1C on the enemy team. And then there's two kills for Fluffy. In fact, he was the only one with two kills in the game. And when it came to base XP, he's got the top on that one, 1,082 base to him, 952 to the IS-2 shielded, and 948 to the T-44. He fired 18 rounds in this game, so a lot more rounds than uh, than Squirrely Nuts did. Eight direct hits, two penetrations on the enemy, and 13 splash. Damage of 1,917 hit points, of which 1,817 were up more than 300 meters. The close shots were actually on the Tiger 2s basically within well throwing distance you could say eight enemy vehicles were damaged two were killed and 970 hit points of stun assist of 13 stuns on a, a premium account he actually earned 45,315 credits from the game and after repair ammunition respawn consumables took away 15,937 credits profit so not quite as much profit as screwly nuts made 1,623 XP times 2 for the first victory, 3,246 for completing a mission, and took away 6,492 experience points altogether. So the M44, it's quite a versatile little RT. It's my favourite RT. I really do enjoy my games in it. But that's because once you fire one round, the next one is almost ready to, to fire uh, almost immediately. Just after you've seen where the shell landed, You've only got to wait a couple of seconds and then the uh, next shell goes out. So it's a fun RT to play. And I think most people, when they're working their way up the RT lines, when they get to the M44, they say, oh, this is what it's all about. This is fun because this is about the fire rate that you normally get from a heavy tank. But it's an RT, which means you've got lots more targets you can fire at. You don't just fire at what you can see. You fire at what your teammates can see. And despite the fact that some people think that RT is boring, it's not boring to RT players because we love being able to support our teammates by firing rounds all over the map at uh, enemy targets and helping them to win the game. So I hope you enjoyed those two replays. And if you did, Please give this video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.